I'm going to go ahead and grab um, my number four brush and we're just going to go ahead and activate our blue. So when I say activate your blue, um, it's kind of a, something I say so you know to bring in water into your paint. Um, I know it's really tempting to just stick that brush right in the middle of that paint, but I like to grab it on its side so I can work in that water easier into this little by little. So I'm going to activate my blue and probably take a little bit more water to get it running a little bit more. And then we're just going to let go let flow. Okay, I'm going to go in. Um, I like to really start around my sides and my corners of my canvas. Um, I like to consistently make these a little bit darker. So we're just pushing the attention towards that center. We're just going to lay down this paint. Um, the first time around, it's probably not going to be as dark or as vibrant as you want that paint to be. But later on when we layer some more, um, you'll be able to achieve that blue that you want. But we just want these places to dry. Um, again, we don't want your paint to be too thick or else we're just going to be pushing around mud by the end. We want to give these places enough time to dry. So water, water, water is your friend. It will really help get this paint going. Again, I want you to um, also recognize that I am emphasizing these long horizontal strokes. Um, these longer lines help the eye to recognize that we were kind of trying to build a landscape scenery. So every time I go back for my blue, I'm bringing in more water and I'm grabbing a little bit more blue and I'm mixing it in more consistently. <clears throat> so it's just a little bit more fluid. So that's just a first layer. So we're going to go in, come back with these colors. Anything that I come up with right now, we'll probably come back with. So it's not the last time you're going to see that blue. Okay, so let's go ahead and divide our canvas in half. In half. And what that does, it allows spaces to dry and breathe so we can work from section to section. So I want to go ahead and divide our canvas in half. I'm going to start, so this is 16 by 20 canvas. Um, I'm just going to use my blue and still use my number two brush. I'm going to make two marks by eight inches. Boop. The next one. Boop. And just so you guys have an extra little space in the middle. Let's go ahead and make the middle so you could connect the dots. Okay, so I'm just going to divide our canvas in half. Um, your number two brush, you could use two different ways. Actually, your number two, your number three, and your number four, you could use two different ways. We like to call this the wide side. So if I go in with my brush and push it down, those bristles open up as much as possible. You could take advantage of the edge once that bristle is pushed all the way down. Or you could use the razor side. If I go up to my canvas, and those bristles are facing horizontally and without pressure, you could achieve a thinner line. We like to call that the razor side. Okay, so at least at this point when we're using just one color, you could get a feel for how your brushes can work with you. Okay. There we go. So at least I see how we're gonna work. Um, I'm going to start bringing in some of my darker undertones. I like to really go with my darks and then build up to my lights. Um, I'm going to go ahead and since I really like to use my number four, I'm going to go ahead and use that again. I'm going to activate my black paint. 
I'm going to activate my black paint, which means we're going to bring water into it. And I really like my black paint to like my darker colors to hug my sides and my corners. So I'm going to start on the bottom of my canvas and blend this in. Um, a lot of my blending happens on the canvas. I'm going to let that run through. And I also want you to recognize that when using my brush, I run it through and I flip my wrist. And that's what's going to help you achieve these feathery edges instead of this harsh stop. So if I don't turn my wrist, you're going to inadvertently make this line. Um, we want to avoid that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run through. So what's happening as well is that we are reactivating that bottom blue layer of paint and it's mixing on the canvas. Some magic's happening on the canvas. Okay, we're getting these nice different layers and different hues of that blue. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Again, every time I go back to grab more paint, I'm dipping my brush in water and mixing in more into that black paint to help it run. Water is our friend. I want to go ahead and mix in another layer of um, depth and shadow. And I'm going to use my number three brush. And we're gonna go ahead and activate our purple paint. So just like the black on the bottom, we're gonna do the same thing with the purple. I'm gonna start with the very sides and corners of our canvas. And I'm gonna work my way in. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this in. We're gonna darken up that blue a little bit. more at this point. Okay, so now we're going to go in. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a few points. Um, we're going to go ahead and build this moon. Um, I'm going to give you a few points. I'll give you the top one. I'll give you these. And we're going to go ahead and make that moon. So I'm going to use my number two brush again. Um, I always make sure to hit my brush on its head a couple times on the bottom of that cup to make sure all that paint comes out. And then I check my paper towel to make sure that no existing paint is sitting on that um, brush so we don't contaminate any fresh color that we're going to bring in. Um, I'm going to activate my white paint, again using my number two brush. We're going to make three points. So the center of this canvas is eight. So actually 10, because that way. So that's our center. I'm gonna make a little point right there so I know where we're starting. And from that center, I'm gonna measure down three inches. Okay, so we make our first mark. Boom, right there. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start from the left side of my canvas and measure in. I'm going to measure in five inches. Make a mark. Boom. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Just remember that red is your five inch mark. Okay. So <clears throat> it's always easier to go smaller and then build out. So I'm going to use my number three brush start coloring in this moon. What's going to happen is we are going to reactivate 
some of that blue paint, which is fine. You're not going to get the white that you want the first time, which is fine. We're going to go ahead. It's kind of like the primer before that real color. So I would start a little bit closer to the inside um, of our points and work it our way out. So again, <clears throat> I'm going to use the razor side of my brush. I'm going to push my brush down all the way so those bristles get as wide as possible. I'm going to start going from point to point. So I'm going to start smaller than that at first. Um, since we're using white paint and we are reactivating that blue, I always rinse off my brush and go back for fresh white. So we're going to be going over this moon again, so it can't, doesn't have to be perfect that first time. And also notice that I'm trying to use a nice long fluid stroke versus etch by etch. Okay, I'm just dragging my brush along that canvas. go. Get that in look like a moon. Okay. So we're going to let that dry. And we're going to move on to keep on building on all these nice textures and layers on the bottom. <clears throat> Since we brought in purple to the top, I always like to incorporate that in the bottom so it feels balanced. Um, I'm going to use my number four brush again. Um, I'm really going to rinse that off. Again, check my paper towel, make sure I didn't pick up any other paint. I'm going to activate my purple. And we're going to bring it into our water. Okay. So again, I'm going to start from the outside. I'm going to work my way in. I'm going to leave this somewhat open. So now we're layering these three colors. Enough for the purple. <clears throat> now I want to go in and go ahead and start figuring out, actually just bringing this to the front right here. This is where all of these trees are going to start coming in. Um, all these trees are what is going to be closest to us. So these are going to be the bigger objects on the canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to bring that bottom landscape to the front. So I'm going to use my number four. Again, I always use my number four. I just like how 
it can lays down the paint. So I'm going to activate our black paint. I'm going to measure both sides two inches. Just for an extra one to help you guys get there. I'll do one right in the middle. Okay. And now I'm just going to color in that whole bottom. So that should have given us enough time as well for that moon to dry a little bit. So we could go ahead and start applying that second layer of white. I'm going to rinse off my brush and pick up that number three again. I'm going to activate my whites. And I'm going to retrace our moon. Again, I always go back for fresh paint after rinsing off my brush, so we're not contaminating that white. It's nice. I like it. Okay. So since we're using our white, I want to bring in some of these background stars. Even though they're going to be kind of covered up, it's always nice to lay down um, this background area to see be beyond those flowers. So I'm going to use the back of my number one brush. So this we get some, your number one brush, um, you would think it's easy to use, but as you can see, if you push down those bristles, they fan out and they open up. Um, you could try to use your number one, but to get an easier job done, I use the back of my number one. I'll go ahead and dip clean the paint. And I'm going to start building out my stars. So since we started with that blue and we brought in all these other colors to the front, I want to bring some of that blue back to the front. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reuse my number four brush again. It's my favorite brush. I'm going to reactivate my blue. And now I'm going to bring all this blue from the side and let it mix with all those nice undertones that we built. So let's give our um, canvas some time to breathe and let all these places really dry before we bring in these nice um, deliberate textures to the front of the canvas. And then we're going to go ahead and do that one last layer of that uh, white paint for the moon as well. So let's go ahead and take a 15 minute break. And uh, it's always nice to walk away from your canvas and come back with fresh eyes. Walk around and also uh, inspire each other. Maybe you'll see something from somebody else that you want to do. Um, but it's always nice to come back with fresh eyes for your paintings. So now that um, we got back from the break and we let our canvas breathe a little bit, um, these, it's nice and dry. So we're going to come in with these next colors, which um, will help it be really have those colors be very deliberate. Um, I'm going to go in now and we're going to go in with that last layer of white for the moon. Um, like I said before, anything I do the top I'd like to include on the bottom. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, add these nice textures to the water to help give the eye some visual points to push it towards what we are building over here. So let's go in with our number four brush. Um, make sure we really, really rinse that off. Remember, check your paper towels to make sure you, didn't, you don't bring in extra color and contaminate that last layer of white. 
And so I'm going to go back in and reactivate my white, bring in some water to get it running. And, and again, the water really helps that brush soak up that paint consistently. And I'm going to go in for our last layer of that white. That's our last layer for the moon. So now since we're using the white, I'm going to continue to use the white. I'm going to switch to my number three brush. And now we're going to bring it down into this area. So I'm just going to really, really water down this white. Um, because I don't want it to just stand in the front. I want it to somewhat blend to the background. So I'm going to follow this down. That's it. Okay. Less is more at this point. So let's go ahead and bring in our landscape area. And remember, this is not like a real landscape. We're just building this idea of what it is. Uh, I'm going to go in with my number two brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just retrace that horizon with that black. And then I'll build um, the ideas of hills and mountains around it. Okay. I'm activating my black paint with my number two brush. <clears throat> I'm take my razor side of my brush and pull this across. So then from this point, I can build my hilly areas. I'm just going to make a couple. I'm going to start with a higher point and then work my way down. And again, like just making these suggestions for the eye to kind of push it towards that center. So I'm going to start here. Probably make a couple, but you can make as many as your heart desires. I'm going to pull this land a little bit around. I'll make a nice little shoreline for here. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Not everything has to be perfectly symmetrical. Okay, I think we're ready to build some trees. Let's do it. I'm going to go ahead, still use my number two brush. Um, I'm going to take my ruler as well. And we could start with figuring out where we want to start all these. Um, on one side, like I said, nothing in nature is perfectly symmetrical. So let's mix it up a little bit. I'll put five trees on one side and three on the other, but it's up to you. Um, you can do as many trees as you want. And I'll go ahead and I'll give myself some points of where I'm going to start. So I'm going to take my number two brush again. And I'm going to use our black paint still. Okay, I'm going to start from our left hand side. And I'll work our way towards that center. So I'm going to make a few points. 
Um, let's see here. So I'm going to keep this in the range of eight inches. Eight inches will be my last tree, which is that one. But they don't have to be perfectly apart. And you could eye this as well. So I'll start about two inches in to make my first point. Boop. And I'll make my last, right? We said we're going to eight inches and be the last for a center frame. So there's like five trees. And they don't have to be perfectly apart. So I'll just go one, two, three, five trees. So I'm going to know we're going to start it. And let's go ahead and build out our last three. So I'm going to start two inches in again. And that last one is going to end at six. Okay, so boom, and boom, and just one in the little middle. Okay, so <clears throat> since these are the objects in our painting that would be closest to us. So since these are the objects that would, like in the, in the painting that are closest to us, um, I want to somewhat make them feel um, like they would. Uh, so when I'm building out my trunks, I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. And what that helps me do is build out a thicker trunk. And then as you look up, things get um, smaller. So I want to somewhat represent that when I'm building out my trees. Um, and if you want to, say you want to figure out what, how to get, build these out straight, you could do the same thing on the bottom, on the top. Okay, so I'll go ahead and show you on one side. So I'm going to go ahead and build that out. So that's our two and our eight. And then... Okay, so that's our destination point. So these should, you shouldn't go in super dark the first time. And what I do is I'll start with the basic skeleton and then I'll go in and really mean it after. We kind of just got it on the canvas. So I always start from the bottom and I work my way up. I'm gonna use the razor side of my brush, which means those bristles are gonna be facing um, vertically, and I'm going to pull it all the way up. And this doesn't have to be perfectly straight. There's no perfectly straight tree. Okay, so it's not super dark that first time. That's fine. We're going to come back to it. Okay, I'm going to build the next one. Notice I'm trying to not push so hard on my brush to try to keep those bristles together. Okay. So now we could get more deliberate with it. Now that, that basic skeleton is there, let's build it out. So I'm laying down black first, so we get this nice undertone. And then when we're done with this, we're going to overlay that with some brown. And notice how I'm using long strokes with my arm versus little edgy marks. I just like to pull that paint all the way through. Even if you feel like it's running out of paint, it's still going to make that impression. So now I'm going to go in with our brown paint. Same brush, number two brush. And we're going to let this mix with some of that black as well. Keep that 
a little bit of fresh color to it for us. And I like that it runs out a little bit in the front. It gives it more of a realistic feel. So we're all done with our tree trunks. Okay, so I'm going to build out some of these branches. Um, it's not going to be too many. As you notice on our original painting, there's two predominant branches that stem out. Um, I'm going to use my number one brush, the baby. And uh, like I said, this brush could get a little bit tough. You would think it's easy to use, but <clears throat> the more you push down and apply pressure to that brush, those bristles open up. So what I do when I'm going in to use my number one, um, I make sure there is water. And I'll go into my brown paint. <clears throat> And I'm going to swirl it like a Q-tip to kind of get those br bristles to stick together. And also, instead of going straight on with my brush to avoid those bristles opening up, I'll lay it a little bit on its side. Okay. So I'm going to put one. I don't want these to be totally the same. So I'll start with this one. And I'll pull this out to the front. Okay, it's not going to be as dark as you want it the first time, and that's fine. We'll just come back. So just get that first layer down, and you could retrace. Okay, and then this one right here, I'm going to stem out. So I'm going to start building around, focusing on this center. Um, like you, you could see it gets really um, covered with those petals. So you're not going to see all these branches, and that's fine. I'm just going to add a little bit to those first two. So this is where the fun begins. We're in a stipple. Um, we're going to use our number two brush to build out these nice petals. Okay, so really, really rinse off your brush. Like I said, I hit it on its head a couple times, and then I check my paper towel to make sure there's no standing paint. Um, I really like to start with my darker colors and then build with the lighters in front. And then it's a process of going back and forth. So I want to go ahead and start just like we did before, we, I emphasized putting those darks around the corners. I'm going to do the same thing with these petals. Okay, when we stipple, it's an effect that it's kind of gets the colors to feel like they're weaving each other. Okay, when I go in, think of yourself um, as like throwing a stack of cards on a table and all those cards would somewhat touch each other. And we want those things. We don't want these petals to stand next to each other. Okay, we want them to stack and, and to layer themselves. And what that does also is when we bring in color, they start to mix as we're layering them. And it creates all these beautiful different hues of those colors. Okay, so I'm gonna start with purple. <clears throat> Again, my number two brush. And when I go into stipple, I don't go directly in. We're gonna use the wide side of our brush. And when I go in, it's more of a laying on its side, and we like that impression. Okay? So I'm going to go in with these first layers. Water helps as well. So this is the flow. We're going to start like this, and these come towards us, and then they start flowing this. This is the energy we're trying to create, like this, with those flowers. So just so you guys know, 
the direction we're going in. Okay, and then follow it down here. So now I'm going to go in with my red paint and start a layer. Okay. So the fun part of stippling is that when you go in, not only are you going to get this nice red by itself, but when you overlay it with that purple, you get a nice maroon. So now we're achieving three different colors. Okay, so you could always add later on once you get a real idea of the colors you want. So I'm gonna go ahead, rinse off my number two brush, Dr. Lewis. And now I'm going to bring in the white. Okay. So just building. So this is a technique that you could probably repeat one more time if you wanted to. So if you really rub that brush in, start to see that pink appear. So just like I said before, um, when we end up mixing a lot of colors on that canvas, you're going to contaminate that color. So I'm going to rinse off my brush and come back up with that fresh white. light colors just stand in the front okay so that's good now I want to add some nice oranges and yellows to really break up through those pinks and purples and those red hues so get some orange now I'm gonna just like we did with the red and then we applied the white to create the pink. I'm gonna lay down the orange and then we'll come back with the yellow to lighten some of that up. So now we're gonna go in with that orange to really break up through that. And actually really complements the other colors. Okay, so I'm gonna activate my orange. Get it really nice. that in. Again, you're going to end up picking up some of that other paint. So I'll go in, rinse off my brush, come back with that fresh orange so it really stands in front. Okay, so I'm gonna, I don't want to do too much right now. I just want to build this out and then I'll really be able to see if I want to bring some of my reds back or my purples back. So I'm activating my yellow and I'm only going to do it as some of them or all of them. I'm going to really concentrate towards that center. Like I said, I really like to keep my sides and my corners dark. Okay, so I'm going. So since yellow is one of the lightest colors, we really want to keep that, um, that nice yellow uncontaminated. So I'm just going to bring in some of it. Okay. So at this point, it's always nice to just stand back and really see what you love about your canvas. Um, for some of you, you might really love that orange. So keep on going with that orange. Um, for me, I really want to bring back some of those darker reds to the front since we just overlaid a lot of these layers. I'm going to bring them back to the front of our canvas. So part of your finishing touches is to really figure out what speaks to you. So I'm going to go in with my red. And start filling in some of these spaces. Now that I'm done with my stippling, 
Um, like I said, it's always good to step back from your canvas and see what you want to add. So part of my finishing touches, I really want to emphasize some of those nice textures that leads the eye to that moon. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that white. Break up some of that blue. Just a little bit. That's it. And the last thing I'm going to do is to add a nice um, highlight of that white. I'm going to really water, water, water it down. And I'm just going to complement some of that brown. And not all of them, just some of them. And what that, that represents is that nice reflection of that moon shining through those trees and hugging some of that trunk. with my number two brush. And I use my finger too. This brings those trees to the front. And like I said, I'm going to do it to all of them. Well, that concludes our painting. Thank you for painting Moonlight and Flowers with me. It was a wonderful full experience. I hope you enjoyed it as well. So hopefully we'll see you very soon. Thank you.